I bought this Max van to install in my 1989 Winnebago Lasharo camper van. It's replacing this tiny old fan, which had a broken lid that doesn't latch closed anymore, and it doesn't do a particularly good job of moving air. It's a big upgrade. When I bought the fan, I noticed that there's an Ethernet port on the circuit board. I discovered that some optional accessories can use this port to add a wired remote control, but I couldn't find any information about how the port works, and I wondered if it could be used to add some smart control or a custom remote control interface to the fan. As it turns out, if you want to use an Ethernet cable to control your Max fan, you can do that pretty easily, and you won't need to take your fan apart to do so. In this video, I'm going to show my discovery process and how I figured out how to use the Ethernet port to control the fan. I'll talk about how you could add a smart controller to your fan for just a few dollars in parts, and I'll demonstrate that with a quick proof of concept. If you just want the wiring information, check out the post on my website where I have all the details laid out and where I'll update as I learn anything new. I've disconnected the control board from the main circuit board using this connector. And my goal is to discover how this works and see if I could use one of these jacks to replicate commands from the keypad here. And I figured this out off camera, but I'm going to just walk through what I discovered, basically. So I noticed that there's eight pins here, and they're pretty much right in line with these connections from the Ethernet jack. And um, if you look at the other side of the board here, you can see the traces that go straight from the jack over to this uh, line of hot glue which covers up the back side of those pins. So to verify that that's how things are connected, um, we can just take a multimeter here. And we just make sure that we have continuity between all the pins and the contacts that we expect to, and we do. Another thing to note here is the pin numbering so that we know how to reference these pins. On a standard RJ45 connector that's used for Ethernet, in this orientation, pin 8 is over on this side and pin 1 is over here. And you can see on the board, there's a little number 7 for that pin and a number 1 for that, and 8's over here. So we'll use that pin numbering um, to keep track of what's what and that goes all the way up to here where we have 8 and 1 and 8 and 1 over here. The next thing I want to do is figure out how this board is wired. So we will look at this um, connection directly with the multimeter to see where we can find continuity when different buttons are pressed. And one thing I noticed is that if I use a flashlight on this you can actually see um, some of the traces and kind of get a good idea of where things are going. So we can see that the pins here starting with 8 come over to these buttons in this area and I've already figured this out but I'll just go through and show you how we do it. So I've got my multimeter hooked up to these wires that I can use to test out this connector and I'm hooked into pins number 8 and 7. And what we can do is for every pair of pins, we can press all the buttons and see if any of them cause continuity across those pins. So I can go through all of these. None of them result in any changes. So I'm going to take this and move it on to the next pin. We can see here when I press plus, we've got continuity and that there's no continuity on the rest of them. So in order to simulate a press of the plus button, we would connect pin 6 to pin 8. So I've got my iPad here with a picture of the panel, and I've got pin 8 over here and pin 1 here. And the, for the plus button, we are connecting pin 8 to pin 6. Then we can move down. And now I just proceed through the rest of the buttons, testing out different combinations of pins based on educated guesses from what I can see in the traces. But where that fails, a little bit of brute force testing gets the job done. I also discovered that connecting pin 1 to 3 will turn on this light, but I've reversed the polarity because it's an LED, which is a diode, and it only lets power go in one direction. So if I do pin 3 to 1 with 3 
getting the positive, then we're turning on that LED. To test that we can control the board with an Ethernet cable, I have a cable here with a jack on one side and where I've stripped all the connections on the other side. And I've also got them fanned out in the same order that they're wired inside the jack. There's a couple standard ways of wiring Ethernet jacks, so you have to make sure you know which one yours uses, but this is good to go for mine. And I have a couple 12 volt batteries that I pulled out of an electric scooter that I got on the side of the road. And um, I'm going to go ahead and test it out. So we should hear a beep here when I connect the positive. That indicates that it has power. And to test out the power button, we can connect six to seven. Let's try to increase the fan speed. So we got eight and we'll touch that to six. To decrease, we'll touch it to five. And we'll test the in-out functionality. So we'll go to five to seven. So you could hear the relay turn off there and then it's reactivating. For the next two minutes or so, I blabbed about how the whole button works and tested it out, but the manual covers that information. So I think I should spare you. Then I reconnected the circuit board to the control panel and verified that we can use both the buttons and the ethernet cable to control it at the same time. For my last test, I wanted to demonstrate controlling the fan with a little microprocessor. So this is an ESP8266 development board and you can get these for literally a couple bucks if you get them from AliExpress or another direct from China seller. Um, and that's including shipping. They're a little more expensive if you get them on Amazon or somewhere local, but um, they're really cheap and they're basically just like an Arduino board. So um, here's a simple little circuit. There's a lot of wires, but um, it's not very complex and I can explain it later, even though this is not really an electronics tutorial. But what I have going on here is I've got one button that's going to just simulate pressing the on off button. And then I've got two lights that'll flash on here. The red one is gonna flash two seconds apart and then it's taking a little break and then the blue one will flash two seconds apart. And every flash, it's going to press one button or the other. Um, I think red is going up in speed and blue is going down in speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and power this on. We get our beep indicating that it's on now. And then I'll press this to turn on the fan. Yep. So that's red speeding it up. Now blue's gonna slow it down. And these buttons are still functional, of course. And then I'll turn it off. So it's pretty cool to be able to add um, some smart control this chip, like I said, has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so you can have an app control it or do all kinds of things with it. And you could power it um, straight with the 12 volt from that goes into the fan with a little chip like this called a buck converter. And that can step down the voltage from 12 volts to 3.3 volts, which this runs on or something like that. So this is adjustable. And here's another little buck converter. And these things are both really cheap, less than a dollar. This one can just handle more power, but um, if you're just powering a chip like this, this is definitely sufficient. And um, uh, one thing I might do if I install this and keep something like this running is I would probably have this on a hard switch where I can turn it on um, when I want it on and not just leave it running on the, on the camper's power all the time. So, I'll just run through what these things do as I disassemble the board to give just a little bit of an idea of how it's put together. Um, but 
like I said, it's not really intended to be an electronics tutorial. The first thing I have going on here is this button. That's just gonna bridge our six and seven pins. So I've got a wire going to each row uh, in the breadboard that connects to that. So we can take those out. Then I have two identical circuits. Um, one is this purple and one is this yellow. And those are going over to a couple transistors that are basically acting as switches that just uh, attach those two cables or connect those two cables when we send a sing signal from one of those pins. So I'll take out the purple one here and I'll just explain with one. I've removed some of the wires from the circuit to simplify it and make it a little easier to understand and I'm just going to talk through it. And I am not an electronics expert, but I'm going to do my best just to explain uh, what's going on. And I'd love to hear if anything I'm saying is incorrect or could be improved on. But the basic idea here is that we've got a transistor here that's going to act like a switch and kind of perform the button press. The transistor has three pins. It has a collector, a base, and an emitter. When we supply a voltage to the base through a resistor like this, um, the collector and the emitter will become connected and that basically acts like a button press um, across the wires that we connect to it. So in this case here, we're trying to connect the brown wire to the green wire, um, which was pin eight to pin six. So um, pin six here is the yellow and it's connecting our um, wire to the collector and pin 8 is this black that's connecting the um, pin 8 to the emitter. Then we supply a voltage through this pin on the ESP8266 and that's going to um, trigger the transistor to connect those. And in order for that to work, we also need the emitter to have a connection to ground. So this is connecting this to the ground rail, and the ground rail connects back to a pin on the microprocessor. So that's just a pretty simple way to do it. You can also use a relay like this, but um, we've got five buttons. You'd need five relays, and that's um, really not necessary, even though relays are very common and well understood. Um, so you might see people doing something like that, but it'd be really easy to put together a circuit like this with a buck converter and glue that all inside some of the extra space that's here in one of the other corners. And it um, seems like a cool way to get a little more flexibility out of, uh, out of your fan.